Hello everyone, Merc Serain here, and we are now in episode 17 of our Enigmatica 6 Expert playthrough. In the last episode, we built the large structure behind us and filled it with a lot of manual create machines. We uh, removed a lot of the stuff off of here, but we never came back and fixed this. So, the mixing station, done. The grinding station, done. The sequenced assembly station, done. Now, in this episode, we need to use them. So we are going to start working on coke bricks. And uh, one of the things that we need is cinder flour. So we're going to be making that now. Cinder flour, as we can see, is just netherrack crushed in the crushing wheel. So we're just going to take a whole stack of this and run it through. Here we are. We're going to drop our netherrack in. And uh, what you'll notice here is the chute can only handle 16 items at a time. I mean, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're not looking for the most efficient uh, system here. We're just looking for a system that will work. One thing to notice that is a little different than it was last time I showed it is actually the mechanical mixer. So on the right, um, actually, we can see this real quick if I remove some bits. I just want to show you what we were working with beforehand. So if I remove this and this, and we just set this right there, Okay, so this is basically what we had before. It was just two shafts and then the cogwheel. When I hover over this, it says the speed requirement is not met. So it's not rotating fast enough to actually work correctly. So uh, I didn't uh, I didn't do... <laughs> That's not where I wanted that. I didn't do anything super crazy. I didn't try to redesign the whole system or anything like that. All we did was speed it up by, you know, large gear, small gear, large gear, small gear. Uh, and now we don't get that uh, speed requirement message. So this is uh, operational. It does hinder our ability to sort of get back there if we really want to, but this is our input chest and we can reach it just fine. So I don't anticipate any problems here, although I still haven't actually tested it. Uh, so we'll see what actually happens when we go to use it a little bit later in this episode. In the meantime, you can see that we've got a bunch of cinder flour going. Looking at our crafting calculator, in order to make the 27 coke bricks that we need, we're going to need some things in between. We're going to need some basalt powder. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at uh, that. Basalt powder is just going to be forged stone, any kind of basalt, through the crushing wheel. So we're going to get that going. We're going to need some construction block powder. Which, if we want to look at that one, super simple here. Lapis, sand, and clay. Nothing much going on. It'll make the dense construction block, which we're going to do in a washing station, which I set up downstairs. I'll show you that just momentarily as well. From there, uh, we need to get the construction paste, which, again, is just crushing. So we'll, we'll get it all. It, this is going to be quick and easy to make. The Coke Brick Blend is... Uh, the hardest quote unquote thing to make here, but it's just the mixer with water. So we're going to go grab some clay. We're going to get some basalt and go from there. Time to put our basalt into our crushing wheel. I've also got our construction block powder. So we're going to go down in the basement and you'll see what I set up down here. It's uh, just an offshoot of our system here. We have two fans set up, one for smelting and one for washing. And all I'm going to do is just divide this into two stacks and do one and one, and we just need to wash it. The one thing I don't have set up down here is then a smoker, which would be a fire block instead of a lava block, so you can actually do food. I don't know that we're going to need it for anything, so I didn't set it up. And this is more just a uh, we need it, so here it is sort of situation. And I don't know if we're going to use it very much, but it is down here just in case we do need it. All right, we got to throw our construction blocks into the crushing wheel. We can see we've got a lot of cinder flour and basalt powder now in there and ready to use. What we'll see is we only need 8 cinder and 16 basalt. So we made way more than necessary, but that is fine. Wow, and look at the quests getting ticked off. Let's go ahead and check out. Oh, that even completed a quest. Powered latch. It's not in here, though. Automation. It's probably in here. Powered latch. Yep. Let's go ahead and take it. 
Okay, our cinder flour recipe here is now complete. This only wants us to make 17 coke bricks, uh, but you can choose to make a coke oven with 27 or a pyrolyzer with 17. Let's actually see what a pyrolyzer is real quick. Okay, so first off, we can see if we wanted to make this pyrolyzer, it would require uh, even more of mechanical crafters than we currently have set up. And you know what? It looks like it serves a very similar purpose. It turns coal into coal coke. You also get tar and you get creosote oil. So the coke oven will give us creosote oil and coal coke. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the coke oven. That was my plan from the start. Uh, but this is something interesting maybe to keep in mind. It might work faster or uh, it might just, you know, smaller. It's only a single block, but I'm not too worried about it. So, I don't know if we can just throw all of these in here and be done with it, but we're going to find out. We're going to just try throwing it all in, see what happens. Oh, I didn't mean to throw that in there. We need 16 clay balls in there. All right, so we can see stuff looks like it has gone in, and all we need to do is supply it with water. So we'll use our infinity bucket. There it goes. The mixer comes down. It's working like a charm. I do believe this should auto output, which it did. There it goes. Oh, Coke brick blend is being produced. This is great. We're almost out of water. In fact, you know what? We, uh, we've used up all of our items. So we have 32 Coke brick blend already in there. The Coke brick blend, we will just smelt that into Coke bricks. So, we could smelt it uh, in our bulk blasting downstairs. Let's go ahead and do that. And you know, can we do anything else with this other than smelt it? Nope, it doesn't seem to do anything other than turn into the coke bricks, which is totally fine. It doesn't need to do anything else. Here's zombie. He should be at least outside of our wall, I imagine. Our crafts are done. We're getting real close to use this, using the sequenced assembly. I'm getting pretty excited about it. Let's just take a look real quick again. In order to make our coke bricks, we just put the coke brick in each hand, the first three hands, and we put the construction paste in the final hand, and we run the piece of paper through. So let's see what happens. I have some paper on me as well. Oh, you know what? It took the whole stack. I don't want to do that. Let's actually split that into three. Okay, I think we're going to try and load... We need nine pieces of paper. I think we're going to try and load all nine in at the same time. And we'll see what happens. But my, my thought process here, right, is... Uh, you know what? Let's actually just load one to start with. Ooh, fancy. And then what is the final object looking like? It says partial coke brick. Progress 4 out of 16. Great. So we should technically now be able to load the rest of these in. And they will go through one at a time. And then we'll pull them all out at the same time and load them in again. Oh, there's a little visual glitch right there. When I look here, they disappear for some reason. Okay, so that was really exciting to watch, but now I am a little confused as to what happened over here. I, uh, I'm feeling like I may have made a large mistake. <laughs> you know the mistake that I made? Uh, so in my crafting calculator, when uh, I look at the coke brick, right, this tells it, I told it, unfortunately I programmed it this way, to say, you need three coke bricks and one construction paste to make 
three coke bricks. However, that's not true. You need four construction pastes and 12 coke bricks to make this. So I think I need to change the recipe just a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and figure that out. So it should only still need the one piece of paper, but if I come here, we're gonna change this to be 12. We're gonna change this to be four. Now we see we actually needed 108 coke bricks and 36 construction paste. Okay, uh, we got a little bit more crafting to do. I'll come back once I have them all set. Okay, I'm back, and I have 28 more bricks in each one of these and 27, so I probably only needed 27 over here. Oh, and you know what? I have the partial coke bricks already in my inventory, so let's send them back through the process. I now need to run these through another two more times. I will come back once they're all complete. The final set of crafts is now moving through, and you can see that they are turning into the coke bricks at the end, which is a good sign. Uh, I heard a break there, but that was just because I think it ran out of materials, which is fine. Here's our 27 coke bricks. I'm going to throw these four in here because I don't know what I'm going to do with them. But now that we've completed that, let's go ahead and take a look at our quest book, because now we can look at computer science. Yep, part one complete. These blast bricks are exactly what we're making next. Before we go ahead and make them, though, do just a little bit of work over here. We need some tools. This is where our coke oven will live. And I believe I need an immersive engineer's hammer. Hammer. This one right here. Uh, easy enough to make, so we're going to go make ourselves one of these hammers. I, actually, I'll check to see if I got one out of a chest first. Uh, and while we're over back at our storage, we'll get all the necessary materials to make the coke bricks. Sorry, to make the uh, the blast furnace bricks, the blast bricks. One of the things that we need to make in order to make the blast brick blend is marl. Marl is strange sand and clay. So we're going to go ahead and try to make that now since we uh, we should have gotten strange sand. Yes, when we were in that land of a tomb. Go ahead and just search for marl. Actually, uh, do I have my clay blocks made? Probably not enough. Let's take a quick look and see how many it says that we would have needed. Uh, six. Six clay blocks worth. I think we have enough. And just to double check, it says we need 12 marl. Okay. There it is, our 12 marl. I don't want to make any more at this time. Another thing that we need to make is we need blaze powder. We're going to throw our blaze rods in the crusher. This should give us at minimum three per blaze rod. And I, uh, right, three times three would have been nine, but we got 11, so that's great. We need those nine. And we needed 20 of this, 10 of that, 36 of this. Um, I'm going to throw the marl in there for the time being as well. We also needed gunpowder. The next thing that we need to make is red nether bricks. And in order to make red nether bricks, you can get nether brick with nether wart. Or you can sandpaper polish a nether brick to make it red. So we're going to do that. I have three sandpaper on me right now. Oh, and uh, actually, I guess I need to go back and get our nether brick. All right, sandpaper only has a durability of eight, so we're only going to run eight through at a time. Well, I didn't expect these to stop it. I mean, they're not doing anything, right? That's unfortunate. We'll just uh, manually pop them off as they're done. 
actually, with that being said, we know now that we can just load all of this in at once. And while we're making other things over here, why don't we create our Coke oven, like so, and then uh, get it going? Because this is actually a long process. So the sooner we get this going, the sooner we're going to get some cold coke, and the sooner we'll get some creosote oil, which we're going to need for things down the road. I also grabbed some levers, because I have a th thought. If I throw a lever on here, uh, I can't. Oh well, I was hoping to be able to control it with redstone. Okay, so here's one of our beer crafts. We're going to need nine blaze powder. We're going to need nine marl. We're going to need 18 gunpowder, and then we're going to need 27 coal coke dust. Oh, I didn't realize this. We're going to need 27 coal coke dust. Uh, unfortunately, we can't make coal coke dust until this system over here has given us some coal coke. Uh, maybe we're Maybe we're good. Maybe we'll have enough. I doubt three will be enough, but we'll see. The answer is no. One coal coke becomes one coal coke dust. So we're going to need, unfortunately, to wait quite a while for that uh, machine, uh, not machine, but the oven to process. I'll come back once we've got more. All right, we now have our 27 coal coke dust. Let's go ahead and do some crafting. I'm only going to throw, I think, half of each of these stacks in there just because I am uh, guessing not all of them are going to make it. Okay, good, good. There it goes, there it goes. Let's go ahead and load up the rest of our box. And put some more water in the cauldron. All right, there is our 36 blast brick blend. Let's go ahead, go downstairs and smelt it. While that's smelting, which I know won't take very long, there is something else I want to do. So here is our Coke oven, right? And every time it produces a new coal Coke, it fills up some more of this creosote oil. And we're getting close to full. So let's, uh, let's go grab something that we can store it in. We have many different options, but the basic fluid, fluid tank from Mechanism is one of the best ones because it's fairly cheap. And in fact, I actually don't want to use the aluminum. I would rather use the iron. Let's go ahead and get four of those out. And this thing, right, holds 32 buckets. We can and we will at some point upgrade that to a much larger container because 32 buckets really isn't that much. But it's a lot more than uh, what's able to be stored default in the machine. And then in the future as well, we will also hook this up to pipes and all sorts of things so we can just pump it out right into our fluid container. But for now, we'll just set it in there and every time it generates more, it's just going to go right into the fluid tank and then we can pop it out when it's done. Are we ready for the blast brick assembly line? We have our... 36 red nether bricks, our 36 coal bricks, coal coke bricks, our 36 new uh, blast blend uh, bricks that we just made, and then finally the 36 uh, construction powder at the end. So just to confirm, here we are, and all we do is send paper through. Again, we're going to need nine pieces of paper, so let's go ahead and pull it out of here. And we're going to run it through. Now, we watched this process go for the coal coke bricks, so I'm probably just going to skip through this and not show it on the video. Dolker. Okay, here we are at the end of our crafts again. Perfect. 27 blast bricks, and that will complete a quest. Let's go ahead and turn that in. It's going to immediately give us some steel, which is very nice, because... Uh, Still does take a little while to make as well. It also let us uh, finish this quest here. So just like we built our coke oven, we're going to come over here and build our blast furnace. Okay, and this gets set up the same exact way. You just make a big uh, box. Three by three by three. 
And then finally, you take the hammer and you right click it. Perfect. Now, how do we make steel? Well, we put in iron and we take this coal coke that we're generating and throw that in. This is what we burn in order to turn this into steel. So, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten percent. It's it's kind of a slow process, but it will make the steel. So, with that, with that cooking, literally cooking, the next thing I think is probably to finish this little section here. We need to definitely put a roof on it. Swap that from cobblestone to something nicer looking. But we can also come over here and we can erase this. We have done the flour. We've done the coke bricks, which was more than 27, by the way. Uh, well, I guess the, the block bricks was only 27. We've also done the 27 blast bricks. We've made the blast furnace and we are currently making the steel. This board's empty. We did it all. Back at our original board, uh, we can see that this is something we did quite a long time ago that we forgot to erase. The coke oven and the blast furnace is now complete as well. So, Tinker Smeltery is something we can probably think about getting into. Uh, these are also things that I'd really like to get into. Auto cobble. And when I say auto cobble, I don't mean... Minecraft vanilla cobblestone. I mean all of the different kinds. I set this up over here, right? And, and let me show you what it is. All it is is it's lava going down with water running in. The water specifically runs to as far as it can go, which is that final block. And when you put a block of any kind of cobblestone here, it will form it above. But not only that, if you put a block of iron underneath where the the block forms it can be random so i did this a little bit manually right to obtain all the different kinds of cobblestones i think this is one of each kind well at least one of each kind i also farmed some things here like this granite cobblestone uh because it came in handy over there but i would like to have this be its own automated system i don't have like a interesting overworld design so it might just live underground where we're not really seeing it but it would have to be somewhat similar where we have all these water streams going as far as they can go so that we're not um we're not eating lava back up into the stream anywhere and we're cr purposely creating the cobblestone over top of the blocks we care about so if we did that we would we would need a little mini system for each one of these that is what I had in mind for the auto cobble. For the small create crop farms, it would be stuff like wheat, right? Um, and we would just run a little minecart around, it's very similar to what we do probably with the trees, and then create trees. Right now we only farm spruce, but I'd like to probably farm, you know, the holly and the normal oak and the dark oak. It would it'd be just nice if we set them all up. So these are definitely projects that are potentially in our near future. Um, finally, from vanilla Minecraft, of course, villagers. Villager trading is extremely powerful, and it would let us get a whole bunch of enchantment books that we should be able to apply with an anvil, right? We can't quite make the enchanter, and we haven't found one. So this would be a good way to start getting enchantments on our stuff. It would also probably let us get, like, higher tiers of armor, which, I mean, let's just take a look real quick. If we wanted to make a diamond chest plate, Right? This diamond chest plate requires us to use a sequenced assembly, which we technically now have set up, although we don't have these these bits. But you have to have an enriched diamond, which means you do have to have an enrichment chamber, and we are definitely not ready to make the enrichment chamber. So if we got um, an armor set up to trade this diamond chest plate, that just, you know, kicks out a, a big sort of manual bit of crafting. In between episodes, I, I also sort of played around with fishing a little bit. You may have seen this box, and this box, this is a tackle box. This is actually a really interesting and cool mod. You create a fishing rod that you can then attach different kinds of hooks on, and I have like a double hook, a normal hook. Uh, you can get different kinds of baits, like minnows or worms, and then fish. But not only do you get fish, but you can sometimes find some other things. So let's actually just take a quick look in this backpack. Um, up to, I don't know, probably about this part here, maybe excluding some dirt and stuff, but all of these fish I got just from, uh, from fishing, but I also got this Neptune's Bounty 
chest. You may have actually seen this in the previous episode. It's been sitting here for a little bit. I meant to show it to you and I forgot. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. Ooh, seagrass, algae. But what is that? A Neptunium pickaxe. Ooh. I don't know if it's really amazing, but the cool property that it does have, which could certainly come in handy, is usable without speed penalty underwater. Will I carry it on me right now? I don't think so, but maybe in the future. And then finally, there's this message in a bottle, and I have no idea what it is. Let's go ahead and click it and see what happens. Oh no. It gave us coordinates? 9.17 north and 19.89 east. Uh. Okay. Hold on. Let's get a signpost. And we're going to just kind of put this here. And it was a uh, message in a bottle. And I do believe it was like 9.7 north and like 19 east. We'll, uh, we'll correct that in a second. 9.17 and 19.89. 19.89. Now, that is a really interesting uh, sort of message. I don't even know how to decipher that at the moment. Is that like compass sort of cardinal direction? Or is that telling me that I need to only go nine blocks north and then 19 blocks east? Because that's not very far away from here at all. So, I think we'll try and figure this out beginning of the next episode. Thank you so much for watching today as we made use of all of the factory components that we built in the last episode. We've got our coke oven and our blast furnace going right behind us you can see the flames burning in both of them in fact i'm feeling rather hot right next to them in the next episode i think we're going to start off looking for that treasure i'm guessing it's treasure from the message in a bottle and then after that we're going to pick a brand new project and roll with it so please join me then merc Serene, signing off <laughs>